Praise God, I am so glad to be here tonight again to just worship and worship with the, all God's people and just be in God's house. And I am so thankful. You know, God's really been blessing me this week. You know, you, I know every one of us here has different times that some things go good and some things are just hard to deal with. And But this week here has been so awesome. And I just want to share a little bit about why this week has been awesome. Uh, Pastor and myself and Trish and Mary and my daughter Tish and her daughter Peyton uh, had a journey to do this week. We had to go on a journey. And this journey that we went on, I'm not going to share all the details. I'm not even going to share the, the, the couple's name that we went and see. But there was this, I'm going to say this, there was this mom and daughter that uh, just needed to, us to come and share Jesus with them. And we went together with Jesus Christ leading and directing everything that we did. And, and the title of my message, and I'm going to get into that here in a minute, but the title of my message is, We Need Other Christians to Be Strong. Amen. And God prepared this message Sunday. I had no clue what we was going to do Monday. I know we was going to do some visiting, but I had no clue what we was going to be doing. But six of us, truly six of us, as Christians went together to go to this house to tell this couple about who Jesus really is. And I got to sit in this circle of six Christian people that literally focus on Jesus and they literally have a relationship with Jesus. These six people, and I'm, on, and I'm putting pastor, I know he don't want me to put him on any kind of pedestal, and I'm not. I'm just sharing a little bit of what happened. I sat there and I listened to pastor talk about Holy Spirit, about Jesus, what he has done in his life and what he could do in this couple, mom and daughter's life. And I sat there and I watched this mom and daughter with smiles on their face and, and, and just get filled with what Pastor was telling them. And you know what? We were sitting there getting filled too. Even as Christians, even though we knew Jesus as the Lord and Savior, even though we stay focused, even though we have a relationship, and what I'm trying to get at tonight is we need a fellowship with one another Christians. We need to come together and work together Amen. as Christians. And I'm going to show you in Scripture what the Bible tells us to do about coming back to church. God's laid this, on, this burden on my heart this past week. But anyway, as I listened to Pastor, and he, and he, and he shared Jesus, and he, he told about Jesus, and, and, and some of y'all probably just think that, well, it's just coincidence. Well, it's not coincidence. Amen. What happened? Amen. As he spoke... I'm telling you, a loud thunder just roared, and, and, and then it stopped. And we just looked at each other, and we started praising God and thanking God. Even the couple did. They just looked, and just, their eyes got big and excited. And then he would come and say something maybe about five or ten minutes later, and then another big thunder would come. And just, it was God. I'm telling you, you could feel the presence of God in that room so strong. It was just unreal. And then... Uh, we went around and let each and every one of us say something. And everybody in there had a part. These six Christian people, everyone God used in this house. And, and as, as it come to my turn to, to say a little something, and the minute I spoke something about something, boom, a big thunder, Pastor. We, I mean, we sat there and just all looked at each other like, God is working really unreal here tonight. And he did. He worked unreal. We got to anoint the house. We got to pray over the house. We got to, we got to do what God's called us to do. As Christians, are we doing what God's called us to do? You know, I know we sat there and we went out to eat, get us something to eat afterwards. And we were sitting there and we was talking. And we decided, you know, we want to do this again. We want to be able to go other places and, and, and share Jesus with people that, that we don't even know how, they, how things are going on in their life. Amen. How hard things they really are dealing with that we don't understand or don't even know. God calls us to go out. He calls us to go out in twos. He calls us to go out in six, seven, no matter. Go out and do what God's called you to do. But before I get started in this, I just want to share with you what, why I've been so blessed this week. And listen to me. If, if you'll take more time for God and love other people and, and, and meet with other people and, and pray for other people and, and let them know your heart and that you love them no matter what they've been through, God will bless you that same way he did me this week. You will have a good week. You will have a great and blessed week. 
And that's all you got to do is be obedient to what God wants you to do. But before we get into the Word, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, I just thank you. I thank you for that, that time you allowed us to go uh, as, as, I'm going to say as a family because we're one. We're one. And our, and our whole family went over there to visit and pray and tell about you, Jesus. And God, you was there and you showed up and you showed up. And I thank you for that, Lord. But God, I just pray right now for our, our church people that's listening right now. I pray for our church members that hasn't come back to church yet since this coronavirus. Yes, I pray for the ones that still got a little fear upon them, Lord. And God, I pray for the ones that's not able to come. And God, I pray you put your loving arms around them. Now, Lord, I pray right now that you just open every heart, every mind, every ear to hear your word, what, I, what I'm bringing today. Because it's from you, it's not from me. Lord. God, I just love you with all my heart. I praise you and I thank you. And we just give it to you right now, Lord. Let the Holy Spirit... Do what needs to be done right here, right now. In Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Praise God. Again, we need other Christians to be stronger. I love this picture right here with the hands. You see each other's hands holding one another. Well, I'm going to tell you what. If you grab to hold somebody's hands and you take somebody else's hands and you let a little child or, or even an adult try to push through that, they can't push through it. That, that's, that's God. See, that's what Jesus is telling us right now. If we'll be obedient to do what we're called to do, then there's nothing, there's nothing Satan or any of his Amen. demons can do to break through what God has created you to do. But the thing about it is sometimes we get so busy, we get so wrapped up in the worldly things, we get so wrapped up in this coronavirus, we get so wrapped up in, in, in uh, going out here doing things that that's, is no meaning to it that we forget to grab hands with one another. We do, Pastor. We get to hold hands with one another and, and, and do what God's called us to do. We, we get wrapped up so much in this world that the world tells us what to do. And even as Christian people, sometimes we, we, God says, wait a minute, wait a minute, stop right where you're at. You, you're, not, you're not doing what I want. Sometimes we make church about church instead of church about God. Sometimes we make our families more about our families and about what we tell them about God. God has got to come first, you all. Amen. Listen, if God has got to come first in Amen. everything we go to do. He oh, has God. got to be number one oh. in, in, in our lives as a Christian because as Pastor me was talking earlier, and I know y'all probably getting tired of both of us saying this, but we're not going to quit saying it no. because it's getting ready to happen. The trumpet is getting ready to blow. God is getting ready to rapture Amen. us out of here. We're getting ready to leave. We're getting ready to go home to be with him. So he's telling pastor and myself, so strong, so strong, start telling people about me. Don't worry about the other stuff in the world, just about me. And that's what we did the other night with this couple. It's all about Jesus. Okay, in Ephesians, let's go. I'm going to be preaching before I get into, uh, I'm sorry, Ecclesiastes 4, 9 through 10. says, two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, one will lift up his companion. But woe to him who is alone when he falls, for he has no one to help him up. Now I want to go back to the very beginning of, of the Bible again. And I love going to Adam and Eve. I know y'all get tired of hearing this. But God created Adam and Eve from the very beginning. And it was for a reason. It was for us. So I pray right now. You know, when, when he created Adam, he was by himself, Pastor. He had a bunch of animals to, to name. He had a garden to take care of. But can you imagine, can, Pastor, can you imagine not having Trish? Huh? I couldn't imagine not having Mary. I, I don't even want to think about it. But, you know, I know there's a lot of just lost spouses, and, and, I, and I do, my heart goes out to them. But I know that they still have Jesus. And he, that's the main source right there. That's the main thing. But I want to just talk about us earthly people right now. As he created Adam, and Adam took care of the garden, and he named the animals, and he, you know, he did all this, but yet he was still something there that was missing in his life. Yes. And God knew that. And God says, you need someone to be there with you. So he created Eve out of Adam's rib. He created Eve, and he says, I created her to fellowship with, with you. See, let me say this, church. When the church is not coming together fellowshipping, when we're not coming back to church doing what we're supposed to do, the church starts feeling weak. The church starts feeling like something's wrong. The church starts feeling like, you know, look around. The, the seats are empty. You know, the, the saddest thing I've seen when I come here to preach the very first time during this coronavirus 
as Pastor was filming me like he is right now, is to look around at these empty seats. I didn't think I'd ever see the day I would be preaching in a church where there's no people. I never thought I'd see that day. But it was for a reason. But let me tell you this. We're back. Hallelujah. We're back, church. We're back. We're back to bring God's word back here. My oh. question is, where are you? Hallelujah. I know some of you are saying, well, listen, I'm still scared. I'm still don't want to. Hey, rebuke that. in the name of Jesus, rebuke that. In the name of Jesus, rebuke that. Hallelujah. You know, I have a problem. Listen, I have a problem. And I know a lot of people are going to get mad at me for saying this, but that's fine because Holy Spirit told me to say it. But I have a problem with, with, with Christian people that's willing to go back to work that's willing to go to the grocery at Walmart, on, that's willing to go to a restaurant, and then they're feared to come to church. Come on, the case on, on. I have a problem with that, Pastor. Yeah, I do. But you know, I'm not judging you. No. I'm just preaching the truth. If God says, preach your word to me, and I'm preaching the word as, as I know how. I love you, and I'm not saying, I'm not even going to come to your house and you need to get in church, because that's not my place. If you're a true Christian, you truly love the Lord, the Holy Spirit's telling you right now, get back in church. Yes, yes. He's telling you right now, get back in church. Right. Listen, you can wear a mask, or Hallelujah. you don't have to wear a mask. There's, it's not mandatory. Thank you, we're wearing masks as leaders because the leaders asked us to. So we're wearing masks. But I'm telling you what, when I sit back on the back row, nobody's around, and Patrick just starts preaching, I take my mask off. Amen. But before I get up to go walk around anybody, I put my mask back on, Pastor. Amen. So you can do that. If that's what's bothering you, if that's what's stopping you, rebuke that in the name of Jesus. Amen. Get back in church. Amen. It takes two of you. Listen, God tells us to go out in two. I learned this a long time ago as a deacon at a Baptist church. I remember the, the deacons, we was going out and visiting. And the, and the chairman of the deacons looked at us all and he says, listen, guys, I, I'm going to tell you this. He was an older gentleman, very wise. God gave him a lot of wisdom and a knowledge. And he, took, he looked at me and he says, all of us sitting there, he says, look, guys, I want you to go out in twos. Don't you never go visit somebody by yourself. Amen. Never go visit someone by yourself. Amen. And I've learned that and I've lived by it and I've tried to do that all my life. Now, there are some circumstances where sometimes you get in church and somebody will come in while we're here, Pastor, just maybe me and you. I mean, you know, if they do, if it's a lady, I say, please, I, I'll have to wait and talk to you later. Amen. But if it's a guy, I still try to talk to him maybe in here. But I don't go out looking and just by myself and, and visiting people and praying for them. I always take my wife or a pastor or, or another deacon or another elder. You know, I want to say this. Years ago when we was at New Beginnings Church, and I know a lot of you are going to remember this that went, we had a group of men that I think it was maybe it was on a Tuesday night. Every night on a Tuesday night, we would go and visit somebody and pray for them. And we got to we got to doing that on a regular basis. And people got to hearing that and knowing that we was going and coming. They got to asking us come, to come. They got to tell us about certain situations in their life. Would you group of men come and pray for me? And I'm going to tell you, I would love to get back in that again. I would love to be able to go out before Jesus blows that horn, blow, uh, horn blows and Jesus comes back. I would love for a group of guys to go out there and, and just talk and pray for people. Because see, there's a lot of Christians. I'm going to get into that in a minute. There is a lot of Christian people that does not have a relationship with God. Yeah. And that's hard to say because when I say Christians, as I believe in all my life, when I know that you're a Christian, I, or you tell me you're a Christian, I know right then that you must have a relationship with God. But there's a lot that I've learned that does not have that relationship. They know who Jesus is, but let me tell you what, the demons in hell know who Jesus Amen. is. So be careful. Be careful. If you call yourself a Christian, make sure that you have a relationship with the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Because there's only one, and that's, that's them three. And nothing can pull them apart. In Ecclesiastes 4, 11, 12, it says, again, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one be warm alone? Let me stop right there. You know, I remember the time back when the, the ice storm hit. And it got real cold, and we didn't have no heat. And I, I had a little gas fireplace, and we all slept in the den. And, and it was still cold. You know, it was still cold. You weren't used, used to having that real warm heat. But when we got in the bed, I remember me and my wife just snuggling up together, Pastor, Amen. just to get the heat and the warmth from one another. Yes. And truly, that's what it's talking about. We truly got the warmth from one another. And if you was by yourself, I'm telling you, it's going to take a whole lot, lot longer to warm up. But if you got your spouse with you and you're, you're lying there in the bed, you feel that warmth. Amen. Well, see, that's what I want to tell you about Jesus. 
Jesus is the same way, if not better. He is better. Amen. There's times in our life when we feel all alone, when we're nobody there to comfort us, nobody else. We don't know how, maybe we've lost our spouse. Maybe we've, we've lost a child. Maybe, we, maybe we've just got out and, and, and lived a life that, that God just says, please come back to me. And, and you're all alone by yourself. But Jesus, all he wants to do, Pastor, is put, your lo put his loving arms Hallelujah. around you. Amen. And you'll feel the heat, the Holy Spirit Amen. heat that he provides for you. And it makes you feel so much better. Thank See, you. you're never alone. Sometimes you think you're alone because you don't have a, a physical person there. But let me tell you what. If you truly know Jesus and you truly are a Christian and you truly have a relationship, he lives right here with you. He Amen. never leaves you. Hallelujah. He never forsakes you. He's always there. And you've got to feel that. you got to know that. I just shouldn't even have to tell you that because you know that. There, you know, there's nothing. You know, Pastor, he laid this on my heart the other day. And it really sunk in. If, if, if we're out there and there's evil out there, there's no way we get any demons in us if we truly have that relationship, Pastor. There's no way any evil. There's no way. He cannot enter this temple. Hallelujah. He cannot come in this temple, I'm telling you, because that makes so much sense. Holy Spirit's there. Hallelujah. And he could never do nothing with Jesus. He thought he put him on the cross. No, Jesus put himself on the cross yes. for you and for me. He died for us. Satan didn't have a thing to do with it, and he still does not have a thing to do Hallelujah. with it. And one day, Jesus is going to put him in hell yes. where he belongs. And I'm going to tell you, then it's over. Then it's over. I didn't know God just brought that. I never even rehearsed that part. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. That same scripture says, Though one may be overpowered by another, two can withstand him. And a threefold cord is not quickly broken. You know, I talked to you earlier when I first started, telling you that six of us went out. Listen to me. There's a, there's a three part that can never be broken. Awesome. Let me tell you what it is. I've done shared it with you once. Let me tell you what it is. The Father the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And there's nothing, no demon in hell again can separate them three. They're together, they're one, just like me and pastor is one. Listen, there's nothing can separate me and pastor Amen. because of the Holy Spirit, because of Jesus Christ. We give it all to God. It all belongs to Him, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So listen to me. When you're going out to pray for somebody, if you've got somebody that's true Christian, that truly you know their heart, just like Jesus knows your heart, then you go as a group and you pray for it and you look and you see how strong it got. I realized that. I realized that Monday night when we went over to this house, this six, and I sat there and listened to my wife. I listened to Trish. I listened to Pastor. I even listened to Tisha. I mean, and then Sweet Pepe coming and, and, and shared and, and hugged. And, yes. and I'm telling you what, the Holy Spirit was so strong, not because of me, no. not because of no. Pastor, but we went as a group believing what Jesus yes. can do. And he did it. He did it. So listen to me. Get together. Fellowship with one another. Get back into the part where you're working God's work with through other people. Through other people. Why do you think he created Eve for Adam? Yes. To fellowship. Why do you think he says what he did for a church? Come back together. I don't want to get ahead of myself because I'm going to bring you scripture here just in a minute. So let's go on. Ephesians 4. 13, it says, Better a poor wise youth than an old and foolish king who will be admonished no more. And I, you know, I thought about our youth, Pastor. I, I, really, I, I am so, so proud of our youth in this church. I am. We've got two youth that gets up there and plays the guitar and the keyboard. I, we've got youth that will bring the message. Amen. We've got youth that, that comes here, you know, when we was going full strong, we had so many youth because we had to shut down for the coronavirus, but we had so many youth that would go up these steps here, Pastor, Amen. and go up to the youth room and had their own church. They would, and I've got times to go share things with them. Amen. Pastor's got times to share things with them. That we go up there, but when I went up there and I listened to what they had to say and they allowed me to say what I had to say, I could feel Jesus through them youth. Them youth could have been anywhere on Wednesday night, Pastor. Amen. They, they had a choice not even to come to church. Yep. I guarantee you that, that was because of their heart. They wanted more of Jesus. And I was so proud that last Sunday they got to give the seniors a little gift and honor the seniors for their time. See, this is year 2020 where they didn't even get to graduate right. They didn't even get to finish school right. 
There's a lot of things. But I'm going to tell you, you listen to me. Listen to me. You have made history. Yes. You have made history. So you look and thank God Hallelujah. for what, what happened. And, and I know this thing has been bad and everything was wrong. And I, and I don't, you know, I, I hate to even lift up the coronavirus. But let me tell you, God always makes good out of everything that Satan tries to make bad. Hallelujah. He always does. So you, you just take time now to think, right. hey, praise God. I'm a youth for the year 2020. And I graduated because Jesus allowed me to. Yes. Now I want to do more for him. Thank so God, God's going to make even better things out of this. But if you look at this picture, I love to see this, this young, young man bow down and praying. You know, I've heard our youth pray. <clears throat> I've heard, I just love it when Zachary gets up there at the end of the service and he says hallelujah. hallelujah. And he always, he always comments on what we preach, Pastor. Yes. He always, he always comments on what I, I know that this young man and all the other youth and the, and the girls too, I've, I've seen so much growth in the youth and how they got closer to God. But I know that this young man loves the Lord so much and so strong. And I just, I, I love that in my heart. Because, listen to me, when I was a youth, it wasn't meant that nothing this bad. There wasn't things on computers. And we didn't even have a computer. I didn't even have a phone to look at pornography and everything. Y'all make a choice because it's right there in front of y'all's eyes. And yet, our youth is here praying and praising God and worshiping Him and doing music and giving their time. They could be somewhere else, like I said before. So I am so grateful. I am so grateful for our youth. I'm so grateful for our little, you know, I miss our little children's time, Pastor. Amen. I can't wait till we get back to that because that's a blessing. When Sarah done the done the children's time and, and she preached sermons just as yes. good as me and you, if oh, not better. Hallelujah. And I just praise God for that. You know, I miss that because God says we need to come together. We need to come together with one another and share it. And, and, and children's time to me is one of the best things to start the service off. And then I think about the music. And I don't like I say I'm gonna get ahead of myself. Let me let me go on. In Hebrews, Hebrews 10, 24 through 25. I get so excited sometimes I just can't be still. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works. Not, listen, to, listen church, I'm talking to church people right now. Not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another. And so much the more do you see the day approaching. The biggest thing I want you to look in this scripture is not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together. Amen. What does, what does that mean, John? Just, you know, what does that mean? This is what God's telling us. He created a church building. This is not church. You are the church. Amen. You are the temple. You are the one. You go everywhere you go, you're the church. Amen. But he created a building. He created a building that we all can come together in. We all can come and worship together. And listen, we come to this church not to party. We come to this church not to just eat. We come to this church not to just watch things on the screen. We come to this church to fellowship one another for Jesus. Hallelujah. That's the only reason we come together. And listen to me. If you're if you're not coming back to church because you're fearful or whatever, and, and I, again, I understand. Maybe you've got a health issue and that, that you can't. I understand that. I wouldn't want you here if you are not able to be here. But if you're able to come here, if you're able to go to work, if you're able to go to Walmart, if you're oh, able to go to the restaurant, you are able to come back to this church. When we, when, before this coronavirus started, church members, listen to me. Before it started, we was running anywhere from 140 to 170 people. Yes. On the average, I'm going to say 145. Yes. Now, in the past four Sundays we've been here, we've been averaging, pro I'm going to say 70. That's half, Pastor. Yes. And, yes. and I'm not trying to beat you all up. I'm just saying, Jesus is coming back soon. Hallelujah. He is coming. I'm telling you, you better be listening. You better be ready because Jesus is coming back soon. And he's going to come to a church because I really believe with all my heart. Hallelujah. This is John. Thank this ain't God. biblical. We might be somewhere else. But in my heart, I really believe that Pastor and myself, one's going to be preaching. And the, the trumpet's going to sound. And this church, we're going to come up and go out together. I and I praise God for that. So my question, if, that, if that's God. what God desires and wants, it will happen. So if it is, are you going to be here? Amen. 
Are you making the choice to put church, to put God, His church, before work, before family, before Amen. Walmart? Amen. Are you going to make that? Mm -hmm. I've got to share this with you. And I've shared it before. And, it, and it's really, really, really been bothering me, been tormenting me. Because my heart hurts when I think about this. My heart hurts to even say this, but I'm going to say it. I was watching Billy Graham, and he's just a man. He's not, he's not God. He's not somebody that's big and special. But he is, a, he is called by God to preach the word, just like Amen. Pastor. Amen. Just like Pastor and myself. He's called, Amen. and he did. He called, he, he preached God's word. He was faithful. I never know anything. And he told us several times as I listened to him, he has made mistakes every day, just like every one of us. He sinned every day. But the Holy Spirit has showed him in a message one day that showed him that, that there is 80%. Please listen to me. Some of you hadn't heard this yet. Some of you have. There is 80% of Christians that is going to hell. Ooh, that, that, when, Pastor, when I first heard him say that, I thought, what is he talking about? And then he explained himself a little bit. But I'm going to explain it to you in probably a little different way. But it's the same meaning. There's people that claims to be Christian that comes to church and sits here on Sunday. There's people that says, I know who Jesus is. And I said a while ago, Satan and all his demons know who Jesus is. Amen. There's people that says, well, I'm, I know for sure that I know Jesus as my Lord and Savior, but I'm not for sure that I'll go to heaven. Mm. There's people that says, well, you know, I've been a good person. I, have, I don't cuss. I don't drink. I don't I don't run around, I don't cheat, I don't do like them other ones over there that's, that come sits in this church and, and I don't have to come to church because there's some in there that does things and, and, and I don't do none of that stuff. But my question is, if you truly know Jesus Christ as your, relation, as your Savior, do you have that relationship with Him? Amen. Because God knows your heart. I don't know your heart. I don't know your heart. You don't know my heart. Only God knows our heart. I don't even know my wife's heart. I know how she, I know her fruit. I know how everything she does every day on around her. But truthfully, only God knows her heart Amen. the way any, nobody else does. He knows my heart better than anybody knows my heart. So my question is, when that trumpet sounds, can you truly say that you have a relationship with Jesus, can you truly say that you put God before your spouse? Can you truly say you put God before your children? Can you truly say you put God before church? Can you truly say I put God before myself? Yes, amen. Sometimes self gets in the way so many times. Can you truly say that? I'm going to share this little story with you. I shared it with Pastor and Trish and my family uh, at the restaurant the other night. Let me, let me just say this. I'm going to tell you how, how you really, truly will know if you have a relationship with God. There was a movie come on. I, I, I watched it from the very beginning when it first was made. It was called Smoking the Band. And I know a lot of you older people have seen this and heard this. But I watched that movie. And I even went to the drive-in. That tells you how old I am. I even went to the drive-in when it first came out and seen it the first, probably the first second night that it, it, it uh, come out. And I watched it. And I've watched that movie so many times. So it was coming on the other night, and I told my wife, I said, I'm going to stay up and watch Smoking the Band. I said, I ain't seen it forever. She said, that's fine. Go ahead and watch it. I don't blame you. So I got in there, and I started watching it. And I started, I just watching the cars. I'm, I love car, old cars a lot, and I was just thinking about things and started remembering things in my past. And all of a sudden, there was this bad cuss word come on there. And I froze. I just froze. And Holy Spirit says, what are you listening to? And I couldn't find the little, I couldn't find that clicker fast enough, Pastor. And my wife asked me the next morning, she says, did you watch all Smoking Band? I said, I couldn't, honey. I'm not, I listen, I'm not lifting me up to boast. I'm not. I'm just telling you what the Holy Spirit did to me. He touched me. He said, John, that stuff that you listen to is wrong. It's not right. You're saying it's okay for them to say that kind of word. You're saying it's okay for them to do what they do. And you're going right along with it. Well, let me tell you, a true Christian a true Christian that absolutely 
love Jesus Christ more than anything in the world will put anything else in there behind that and put Jesus first. And that's what we need to do. We need to put Jesus first. Listen to me. He's got to come first. When Holy Spirit tells you to do something, do something. I'm not going to share this, what the pastor said, but the pastor said Holy Spirit told him to do something. Amen. And he disliked me. He says, why? I don't want to do that. But he went on to do it. And God blessed him. Hallelujah. See, there's times in our life we don't understand when God tells us to do something. But if we truly have a relationship with him, we know for sure that no matter how much pain it is, no matter how, much, how hot, no matter how hard, no matter how uncomfortable we get, if we obedient, we get so blessed when it's all said and done. Hallelujah. We get so blessed, Pastor, when it's all said and done. And I just want to, you know, the Holy Spirit just tells me right now, don't go no further, John. Put the paper up. I've got so many more scriptures. I do. But he wants you to focus on him. He wants you to focus on Jesus Christ. You know, I've, I've kind of got on some church members' toes today, Pastor. Yes, praise God. Because Holy Spirit has got on my toes as I prepare this. Thank you, Father. And I'm just saying, church, listen to me. Let's, let's come back to church to fellowship with one another so we can reach the lost people. We're not, I'm not trying to get numbers in here and say, look at Open Arms Church, look at the numbers we got now. I don't care about the numbers. Amen. I care about you. Hallelujah. I care about us coming back together, fellowshipping with one another, and working, start putting teams together to go out and pray. Ladies, would y'all like to get together in groups, maybe six, five or six, and start going to other people's house and tell them about Jesus? When you men, truthfully men, you don't have to be deacons or elders. You just need to know Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, and come together and work as a group of men and go out and start praying and doing things for other people. Time is getting so short, Pastor. And I, I know that many of you preach this every time we get behind this pulpit. We always bring in that Jesus is coming back soon. And he, it is so close. And we can't, we can't tell you enough. But if you're not coming to church to get the fellowship and, and, and let Holy Spirit deal with you, yes. then only you and God knows if you truly, truly have that relationship with Him. Amen. Only you and God. Yes. I'm not here to judge you. I'm here to love you. Amen. But I can't even love you if I can't see you. Come on, so let's get together. Let's come back to church. Let's put the priority where it needs to be. Let's put who needs to be put first. And that's Jesus Christ. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Thank you. Heavenly Father, I just thank you, Lord. I, I thank you for just uh, bringing the word, Lord. So it, it was a little difficult today. I'm just going to be honest about it, God. I'm just, I'm just telling you, it was a little difficult today because, God, sometimes it's hard to bring a word that, that you feel like you're hurting people. But, God, I'd rather hurt them to heaven and let them go to hell. Yes. So, God, please show me what I need to do to better myself and get closer to you. Every day of my life, I want to do better for you, Lord. I want to reach people out there for you, Lord. Now, God, bless, bless the people that heard this right now. I pray for the ones that maybe don't even go to church here, Lord, that that's this first time they've ever listened. I pray to God, let them just come here and try it. Just, just let, let them come and, and feel the presence of you. And God will love them just like they've been here for 20 years. So, God, we love you. We praise you. We thank you. And it's all about you, Jesus. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus.